Racism is a man-made creation. And all it does is deteriorate from our collective prosperity. Racism is everywhere, and we need to fight against it. Born in Regina and raised in Calgary, it's no surprise as a child, Matt Dumba fell in love with hockey. But as a young boy with Filipino heritage, Dumba found out quickly not everyone welcomed him to the game. At what point did you recognize, well, I look a little different than most of the kids who play hockey, and maybe the hockey experience because of that's gonna be a little different for me? Opposing players, you know, saying racial slurs to me, or, you know, telling me that I don't, I don't belong in hockey. I bottled up a lot of stuff because you don't have a voice to go somewhere and you don't want to bring that hurt to your family on a consistent basis. He's seen racism, like, in, like at a young age. Even now, like, he talks about different things that's happened and I'm like, oh my God, you kept that from me? But it's because, mom, you get so emotional. You get so, you know, I get like mama bear. Trina Dumba was adopted and grew up in a multicultural household. It's there that she learned the importance of inclusion from her late mother, Edna. My mom and dad were amazing people. My mom was English, my dad was German. My mom loved kids. So they adopted seven other children of all different nationalities. I think that kind of is why I'm so keen to stand up for a fight like this right now because of her legacy. Now when he looks back and we talk about it and stories, he's like, wow, like I wish, I wish grandma would have lived longer that we could experience some of that. Like she and my mom would just be so, see, this is where you're gonna make me cry. My brother would be so proud of Matthew, both my boys. If your uh, late grandmother could see you today, what do you think she'd be thinking? Um, she's probably pretty proud. She'd be really proud of what uh, me and my family, me and my little brother um, are doing right now. Edna not only adopted her own kids, but she fostered hundreds of in-need families over the course of three decades. With his grandmother's legacy in mind, Matt, who was drafted by the Wild in 2012, has become a pillar in his community, working with kids in Minneapolis-St. Paul many who live just blocks away from where George Floyd was murdered. So many emotions ran through my body, anger, rage, fear. Um, I, I was scared, I was, I was really scared. I was scared for uh, the people in that community, especially the kids you know, that live in that community and to see what was happening in the aftermath of it all was, uh, was just terrifying. Matt, you're one of the founding members of the Hockey Diversity Alliance. Why was it important for you to join this group and lend your voice to it? I wanted to lend my voice to this group for those kids out there who are, who are battling um, the same things that I went through. And so they can know that there's guys out there who have gone through that stuff and who are, you know, want to stand up for you and amplify your voice and, and be there for you. I want to eradicate racism from this game the game that I love so much. We all need to get behind it and come together as one. And that's the only way we're gonna unite and you know, show how great hockey actually can be. I think you should have it. I'm gonna have to grow bigger. Yeah, you're gonna have to grow bigger. <laughs> I hope this inspires a new generation of hockey players and hockey fans because black lives matter. Breonna Taylor's life matters. Hockey is a great game, but it could be a whole lot greater, and it starts with all of us.